Erica here and I'm here today to bring you the second video of my literary movement series. Today we're going to talk about American Romanticism. I've already done a video on European Romanticism which I will link down below. I want to start by thanking everyone for all of their really thoughtful and kind comments on that video. I really appreciated it. I also wanted to note a lot of people pointed out things that they wished I had talked about or that I missed. As I get this series going I'm trying to just do an overview of the literary movements that I'm talking about, I will be doing like spin-off videos and going into greater detail later. So I'm not intentionally trying to leave things out. It's just a lot of information to pack into a video. I'm not trying to make these videos like 45 minutes long. Like I said, there are whole university programs and classes. People get PhDs in these topics. Like there's a lot going on. This is just kind of for fun educational purposes and to spur discussion. But again, I want to thank you all for your kind comments and you brought up some really good points, which I will be taking into consideration as I carry on with the series. So American Romanticism is a little bit different than European Romanticism. First of all, it emerged a little bit later, of course. Europe was ahead of us. Um, so whereas European Romanticism started about 1800, 1800 to 1810, American Romanticism didn't really pick, out, pick up until 1820 and it's generally acknowledged that the period that we deem American Romanticism was from 1820 to 1880. American Romanticism was still focused on many of the same themes that I talked about in my European Romanticism video, so I recommend that you go watch that if you're interested in that because I'm not going to go too much into detail. But they were focused on subjectivity, imagination, um, nature as a force of good and the individual. They were focused on the common man as a hero. So all of those themes were still present in American Romanticism. There are some differences that emerged in Ro American Romanticism, however, and that's mainly because American Romanticism was influenced by different factors than European Romanticism was. In America at the time, there was this really big focus on the frontier and on expansion and industry. And so the idea of the frontier and on expanding gave people a lot of optimism, a lot of hope, and kind of brought on this new feeling of opportunity for Americans at the time. American Romanticism was also based more in fiction than in poetry, whereas European Romanticism was based primarily in poetry and then spun off into fiction. And it also had a really strong root in American history, and it focused a lot on the darker aspects of American history. During American Romanticism, we see um, storytelling techniques such as the slave narrative emerge, and really this focus on um, moving away from old traditions and kind of finding new traditions. There's a lot of focus on uh, challenging old religious traditions and kind of finding new spiritual ideals. So overall this was there this there was this kind of rebellion against what until then had been the American tradition and this rebellion against religious ideals and the dark and dirty aspects of American history. Um, interesting enough of course during this period the Civil War was also fought. There was a lot going on with race with states rights and all of those things. This isn't a history lesson. So that plays in very interestingly into American Romanticism. And like I said, the slave narrative is an aspect of American Romanticism that wasn't um, quite so prominent in European Romanticism. Interestingly enough, during the Romantic period in America, there was, we saw a marked increase in um, female authors who were being published and recognized. And that happened in Europe as well, but a little bit more so in the U.S. And just like in Europe where we had romantic gothic literature, um, in the U.S. we also had American gothic romantic literature. You can see that in stories like The Legend of Sleepy Hollow and Rip Van Winkle, which are very classic kind of gothic American stories. Some American authors that really embody American Romanticism in their work are people like Herman Melville, Nathaniel Hawthorne, James Fenimore Cooper, Edgar Allan Poe, Emily Dickinson's poetry is very typical American Romanticism, uh, Margaret Fuller and Washington Irving are all authors that kind of picked up on these ideals. And again, um, some of you in my last video 
were commenting about specific works, and I'm not going into specific works at this time. There's plenty of time to do that later on. I will be doing that later on. This is just an overview of sorts. There were two kind of sub-movements within the American Romantic period. One was Transcendentalism and one was Dark Romanticism. Transcendentalism was a 19th century American philosophical movement, primarily. It really picked up during the 1820s and 1830s, and there was a lot of um, philosophical works as well as essays and poetry being written on the themes of Transcendentalism. Some of the themes that can be found in Transcendentalism are self-reliance, there is this idea that modern technology was corrupt and that we should be moving away and removing ourselves from modern technology. And there was also a huge focus on the goodness of nature as well as the goodness and the inherent goodness of humans, which is a little bit different than what we talked about with romanticism before where nature was inherently good and humans were inherently bad. Um, and there was a huge focus still on the corruption of society though as a whole. Um, you can see transcendentalism in writers such as Henry David Thoreau and Ralph, Ralph Waldo Emerson in particular. So works like Walden um, definitely focus on the themes of transcendentalism, but still stand as American romantic works. Dark Romanticism emerged after Transcendentalism. Transcendentalism really hit its peak of popularity in the 1820s and 1830s. Shortly after that, Dark Romanticism emerged. Dark Romanticism found man to be inherently sinful and very self-destructive. Um, nature was portrayed often as a very dark force in dark romantic works, where it was still very powerful and very much the centerpiece of the literature being written at the time, but it took on a bit of a darker and more sinister element where nature had the power to punish man for his faults and for his sins. So those works really focused on human fallibility and self-destruction, and some writers who have been uh, qualified as dark romantic authors are uh, very famous, Herman Melville, Nathaniel Hawthorne, and Edgar Allan Poe, and you can definitely see kind of the darker, more gothic elements, but it's not necessarily gothic romanticism as much as it is kind of a sub-genre of American Gothic Romanticism, if that makes sense. We're like digging through the layers here, peeling back the onion, whatever have you. Um, so that is basically just a really quick brief overview of American Romanticism and the ways it kind of differed from European Romanticism and how it emerged and shaped itself. If you have anything to add to this discussion, if you have any questions, if you have anything to say at all, I would of course love to discuss it in the comments. I've really enjoyed so far how this series has spurned a lot of discussion and commenters have been talking amongst themselves in the comments. It's been great. It's been really fun to watch and I'm always willing to learn more. Again, I'm not an expert. I'm having to research all of this myself and I'm teaching myself as I go along. But thank you for watching and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye!